In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Screaming Frog SEO tool to find broken links on your site or links that cause 404 errors. And I'm going to show you two ways to fix them. And the reason you want to fix them is because too many 404s lead to a bad user experience and search engines don't like them. So if you have too many of them, they're going to end up decreasing your rankings, which you don't want. And we're getting started right now. An important aspect of SEO is making sure you don't have broken links inside your site. And those broken links result in 404 errors. It's really hard to check for broken links outside of your site, and Google Search Console can help with that to some extent. They can't find, or they don't find all of them, but a lot of them they do find. An external 404 is when there's a link somewhere on the internet that links to a page on your site that's no longer there. Then people get a 404 error, and they usually bounce back off your site. It's bad for user experience. Google doesn't like it, so if you have lots of 404s, they're gonna start being upset with you and start lowering your rankings. It does take a lot of 404s to get there, so don't panic if you have one or two or 10 or 20. You have to have thousands that are not being addressed for a long period of time, and then Google will start taking action. But if you do find 404s, because you wanna create a good user experience, you should be on top of them right away. So even if you do have 10, make sure you fix them, because people who go there are real people who are trying to get real information and may be wanting to do business with you, but they won't because they can't find what they need because there's a 404. All that to say, Screaming Frog is one of my favorite tools to find 404s inside of a website. So when you link from one page to another inside your site, where are all the 404s? Where are links going from one place to another that doesn't exist? And Screaming Frog has free and paid versions. I use the free one. Just go to download and it'll show for Windows. If you're using Windows, I'm using a Mac, so I'm just gonna download this version for the Mac version 10.4. When you're watching this, since you're watching it after the day I publish it, there'll likely be a new version, maybe 10.5 or maybe version 13. Who knows? But the functionality is going to be pretty much the same. I'm just going to wait for this to finish downloading. Now I just click on this to open it. And I have version 9 installed on my computer. They shouldn't conflict. This should just install a new version as 10.4. And it wouldn't let me update from version 9, so I had to get the new version from the website. Click and drag into applications. If you're on Windows, you're not really used to that kind of thing. So it's going to replace the original or re replace the version 9 that I have. Just click on replace if you get that message. And now it should be up and running. So if I search for Screaming Frog, it's not up and running yet. So let's go the other way. Go to Applications, Screaming Frog, double click to open it. Click on Open. Accept the end user license. And now we have Screaming Frog right here. There's a lot of stuff going on in Screaming Frog, so don't worry too much about it. We're just going to focus on four fours. And the first thing we have to do is enter a website address. So I'm going to enter my website. And I'm willing to bet there's going to be some 404s. Enter the website, click on start, let it run. I believe the free version does up to 500 pages. So if you have more than 500, gotta get the paid version or be happy with the free version. Here it says that. Limited to 500 URLs, which is fine by me. So far, it's only done 200 almost. Just going to fast forward while this runs. Once it's done running, click on response codes, and then under filter, choose client error 4XX, which there's a lot of different four errors. Four or four is the one we want. So click on there, it's gonna show all the errors that start with a four. And surprisingly, I don't have any. But if you have four fours listed here, there'll be URLs, just like you see URLs right here. So let's just use an example. Let's say this one. WP Security Action Plan say that resulted in a status code of 404. You have a couple options what you can do if you have a 404. You can redirect this page to a different one. Hopefully it's on the same topic. If you don't have one on the same topic, you can even just redirect to your homepage. So at least they go somewhere. Or you can create the content they're looking for. So if it's, for example, a blog post that used to be there, but it was deleted or disappeared or something, you can recreate that blog post and be getting that traffic to that blog post immediately instead of getting 404s. So those are the two ways you can do it. The Creating the page that's there for the 404, pretty self-explanatory, but I'll show you how to do that anyway. I'll show you how to do the redirect as well. So if we just head into our demo domain, and let's say it was a post that had the 404, just go to posts and then add new. And then the example we use was WP Security Action Plan. Click on save draft for now because we're still creating it. And you would publish it when you're ready. But you want to make sure that this URL matches what is in Screaming Frog as listed as the 404. In my case, it doesn't because it has a courses subdirectory, which is created by LearnDash. So I'm not going to be able to get this exact on my demo domain, 
but you want to make sure the URL here matches exactly, and it should. It should be because you have the same permalink structure throughout your site over time. All you should have to worry about is the slug at the end. So the last part of the URL, which is the part you can edit for the page. The permalink structure on this site is a little bit different, has the, the year, month, and the day. So if you find the permalink structure has changed from the 4.4, don't change your site's entire structure. If that's the case, you want to just create this page with the new structure and then create a redirect from the 4.4 to the new page. Or if you want to just redirect your 4.4 to, say, the home page, you just do that with using a 301 redirect. You can use a plugin for that, or you can do it right inside of your hosting account. So if I go into my hosting account, which is SiteGround currently, and if you want to see the 20 or more reasons why I use SiteGround, there's a link in the description down below to a blog post about that. Once you're logged in, click on My Accounts. And this is the same for any cPanel host. Go to cPanel, then scroll down to get to File Manager. You can do this via FTP as well if you're more comfortable with FTP. Open the root for the website, and you're going to have a file called HD Access. If you don't have a file called HD Access, it might be that it's hidden because it is a dot file. If that's the case, when we first logged in, click on File Manager, you have to make sure this checkbox is checked. Show hidden files, dot files, otherwise HD Access won't be visible. Or there might be a setting inside of here in the top bar somewhere, not in this cPanel, but other cPanels I've seen it, where you can enable hidden files to be visible. Or if you don't have HD Access file, you can create one. Just click on New File, click on dot, or type in .htaccess, click on create new file, and that will then be your HD access file. So once you've found it, you can open it by highlighting it, clicking on edit or code editor, both of them work. Code editor just has syntax highlighting and numbers down the side to show you which line you're on. I've got a lot going on in this HD access file, and I've got a lot of 301 redirects. So if we do a 301 redirect, let's go to the very bottom. So down here, we'll type in redirect, 301, and we want to get the URL. That is the 404 page first. So this is the page on the site that generates the 404. We want to remove the domain name and just have that first forward slash. So you have the entire URL except for the domain name. And then next, we add a space, and then we have the URL where we want the traffic to go to, where we're redirecting to. So let's say our new page is at this location. So we're redirecting from our domain name forward slash courses forward slash WP security action plan to we have the domain name here and then just WP security action plan without the courses. And that is how we create a redirect from one page to another using the HD access file. You can do this as well using a plugin. The plugin I like to use is let's go to plugins first then add new and search for 404, that should bring it up. I don't know the exact name, but I know the image they use. I like to use this one down here. What it does, it automatically creates 301 redirects for 404 errors. I've linked a tutorial up above where I go through all the settings of this plugin and how to set it up. But essentially what, it, what that means is if someone comes to your site and there's a 404 for whatever reason, it then creates a 301 redirect based on rules that you set. Maybe you want all 404s to just redirect to the home page, and that's fine. And then there's a log in the plugin that shows you exactly which page they tried to access but wasn't there. And then they were sent to the home page. But then you can see a list of all the URLs that were attempted to be visited by people, but they got 404s. And then if you find there's a page that gets a lot of traffic but it's not there, that'll be one that you want to create the content for, like I said earlier. You can either redirect or you create the page. So you want to create the page for the ones that get lots of traffic that aren't there anymore for whatever reason. But with this page, the visitors don't see the 404. They're just redirected to a location that exists. They just won't have the content they were looking for per se. So this is a plugin I recommend for redirecting 404s to 301s. Automatically, you also do manual 301 redirects with this plugin. Like I said, in the card above in the description down below, there's a link to setting up this plugin. It's very, very useful. So to quickly recap, we use Screaming Frog. We scan our site. Up to 500 URLs are scanned with the free version. Once the scan is done, we go to response codes. We filter by client error for XX. Hopefully you don't have any like I do, but maybe you do have some. And then we want to go ahead and either create a page or post for that 404 page or redirect it using either HT access inside the file manager or using this plugin, 
you can automatically create 301s for every 404 page. And that's a quick crash course on how to manage 404s internally on your website. Like I mentioned before, there's also external 404s, which Google Search Console gives you data on. I have linked a tutorial up above that shows you how to find that data in Search Console. And fixing them is by the same methods I showed you here. Either you create the page or you create a redirect. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or in the private Facebook group. There's a link to it in the description down below. And make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on your screen so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.